You may remember when we went through the Cisco ASA section that we had this concept of network objects. So a network object is an IP address, a range, a fully qualified domain name that we're basically just giving a name to. And then once we give it that name, we can leverage it within our organization in lots of other places. Uh, notice when we describe network object here, we've got these various components within the list. Just below it, we see port, we see interface, we see tunnel zone. Um, application filters, VLAN tags, security group tags, I think a lot of this should look fairly familiar from the ASA. It's a lot of the same concepts, just stored in different locations, right? Even things like time ranges. We can define a time range and then use it elsewhere within our rules. One of the fun things that you may not have had access to on the ASA was geolocation visibility. Uh, this is right there, front and present, on a lot of your different views. So when I'm looking at things like rules, when I'm looking at alerts, I can get a bit more intelligence than I'm used to looking at. Really pretty neat. Um, you've also got this uh, uh, concept of security zones. Remember when we would go to the interface of the ASA, we'd set a security level? It's kind of similar. We can just group different interfaces that are connecting to different regions with a similar security requirement uh, to one another, and then we call that a zone. Uh, URLs can be contained in objects, uh, and then these objects that once they're created, uh, of course they can be used within our access control policy, they'll also be used within our NAT policy. The process of defining objects is pretty straightforward. You give it a name and then you define what the parameters are. Uh, realize that we're, our network objects are typically things like IP addresses and subnets, and then of course our port objects tend to be things like a protocol and a port number. Once we define all of our objects, very similar to what you had in the ASA, you can put all these objects into a group together. The cool thing about doing so is that that object group, which contains more objects, can be referenced by its name. And anytime I grab it by its name, I'm gonna contain all the children within it, which is pretty neat. Um, over time, as I increase the size of my organization, I grow, I can come in here to DMZ services, and maybe I wanna add TCP, in UDP 53 for DNS zone transfers and large replies, as well as the regular lookups. If I add this at a later time, it's gonna to apply to all the other points within the configuration that I reference this name. What I really like about this is it helps me as an administrator keep my policies consistent across lots of different configuration areas. Uh, if you've been doing this for a while, maybe you're better at it than I am, but I've struggled um, trying to keep different sets of sub-configurations the same across multiple devices or across multiple sets of sub-configuration. By using that named configuration one time and referencing it, it really helps me stay consistent. And then I'm not troubleshooting my own work later. So here's kind of like a use case where they're showing you the objects and object groups, right? Um, we're looking at a rule and our rules say, they start off here with a name, right? From inside to outside. And then we've actually got our traffic condition. And then we've got our actions. So it's like, hey, firewall, when you see traffic coming from the inside zone, destined for the outside zone from this specific subnet, and there's our network object, to this other destination network object, for these destination ports, he's like, what do you want me to do? And I say allow. Pretty straightforward, right? So this should look very, very similar to what we would do using traditional access control lists uh, on the Cisco ASA.